السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, I wish you a very good day, week and month today and I congratulate all of you with the coming of the 1440 Hijri calendar year I know, I mean uh, Islamic year to the Muslims and I wish that such a year would become a year of peace, safety, tranquility not only for the Muslims but for everyone else and we should use this opportunity to join hands in hands with our brothers and sisters in humanity to bring peace, safety and tranquility to humanity. Today I am talking about some subject which could be a little bit uh, boring but difficult which is gradualism in maturity and knowledge. People might say to me how on earth to talk about such a subject while the people, the three million people in Idlib are under fire or while the 20 or more million people in Yemen under fire or while the people in Myanmar, the Rohingya people are expelled every day and every week because of this ethnic cleansing or maybe the conflict in Syria is still not ceasing yet and no peace there Iraq is still about 3 million people, so why I'm talking about gradualism and maturity and knowledge? I'm referring to yourself and myself to a verse from the Quran in Surah Tawbah, verse 1-2-2. Allah in such a verse, He is telling us, warning us as believers and warning everybody, okay, should not collectively stand up, stand up just to respond to the humanitarian, to the humanitarian response. But he is organizing us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, but say, by saying from out of each group or each community, we should look at the specialized individuals on the specialized group inside such a community. And such a specialized professional group will be able to warn before that will be able to know the subject of your material response the subject that was needed by the community and the subject that was needed to build the community then this specialized group can come out of knowledge part of their knowledge to warn their people and to guide their people. Allah said in the Holy Quran, وَمَا كَانَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لِيَنْفِرُوا كَافَةً فَلَوْ لَا نَفْرَ مِنْ كُلِّ فِرْقَةٍ مِنْهُمْ طَائِفَةً يَتَفَقَّوْا فِي الدِّينِ وَلِيَنْفِرُوا قَوْمَهُمْ إِذَا رَجَعُوا عَلَيْهِمْ لَعَلَمْ يَحْضَرُونَ That means, if the tsunami is coming, and we knew the tsunami is coming within an hour or two or three, some of us, will be responding to the tsunami, some of us will be preparing something else, some, some of us will be doing so. We should be dividing ourselves according to the knowledge that all of us to go to one direction and leave the responding in the other direction. Specialism is the name of the game. That's why at the time of Edlin, when there's a catastrophe, People have to think outside the box how to look at the future, how to draw the future, how to save community, and how to rebuild the community. I will thank again and again and again the three young people who are helping me, Ahmad Sheikh from Idlib, uh, Maher Said uh, from Idlib, but he's living in, in uh, Antakya, as well as Abdurrahman Nahas is from uh, UK. This is a definition of gradualism. Gradualism in sociology means a policy, a policy of gradual reform rather than a sudden change or revolution. A policy of a gradual reform rather than sudden change or revolution. In biology, it is the hypothesis that evolution proceeds chiefly by the accumulation 
of gradual changes. Any evolution will proceed through accumulation or gradual accumulation of changes. In natural science, the definition of gradualism is the theory which holds that profound change is the cumulative product of slow but continuous acts. Cumulative product of slow but continuous process, often contrasted with catastrophism. Yet, it is profound change is the cumulative product of slow but continuous process, often contrasted with the catastrophes that we can see. Now, gradually, when you tell somebody gradually, gradually means growing slowly over a period of time or space. This is the definition of gradual. The second part, the second component of my talk today is what? Maturity. Maturity is the quality of behaving mentally and emotionally like an adult. A young man at the age of 13 and 14 could be acting like an adult. Or could be another definition, a very advanced or developed form of our state. A very advanced class, you've reached the top or the state of being completely grown physically. The age of prophethood is the age of 40. It is the age of maturity for men. What do you mean by knowledge? Knowledge, knowledge of facts, information, and skills acquired through experience or education. Facts, information, and skills acquired through experience or education. The theoretical or practical understanding of a subject. It's not only education, it's experience, it's over a period of time. Also, knowledge is awareness or from familiarity, gained by experience of a fact or situation. And you gain this experience through seeing it. Familiarity also is another definition. It's the familiarity, awareness, or understanding. Understanding of what? Of someone or something such as facts, information, description, or skills. Look at it from the experience. Which is acquired through experience or education by perceiving, discovering, or learning. This is knowledge. Knowledge is not a certificate you take from the school or the university. Can also refer to knowledge as a theoretical or practical understanding of a subject. Theoretical and practical understanding of a subject. Why I'm talking about maturity, gradualism, and knowledge? Because when I talk to young people, like all of you are young men and women, you want to change the world yesterday. You want to bring tomorrow last week. You want to stand on a change on a utopian world just like this. It will never happen. It will never happen. It will never. It should be a gradual process of seeking knowledge, of understanding, of completing process through experience and through education. And this diagram, this slide, talk about what we need to do to make the positive social change and reform in our society. The positive social change and reform in our society. First of all, we have to look at the educational curriculum. Educational curriculum for you and myself. This kind of curriculum has to start from the bottom up which is first of all, each one of us should believe that he or she would like to become a change maker and to make the social reform. Second point in, on the ladder of going up is to join this process as a volunteer from the very beginning. As a volunteer from the very beginning. Third point, after becoming a volunteer, you should become a trainee. Somebody will guide you and train you. 
in the social uh, atmosphere to become a social reformer or a social change maker. Then you should learn and I should learn how to sit and receive the knowledge and information from others. How to sit and listen, understand the information and the experience from others. So from believing to volunteering to becoming a trainee to receiving. After that, when I become confident, I should come become a worker in the community. Start as a worker to do things, to follow what I've been instructed to do. Then to implement the program. So I go from just doing things which I've been told to do to understand the whole program, the whole project, and become implementing some parts of such a program and through such a process in this area, with this kind, with this part of the community. While I'm doing that, I have to look at what I'm doing to comprehend, to comprehend, to comprehend, to understand, to be able to see the whole project, to be able to see the impact of the whole program on the community that I'm helping. Becoming a worker, then implementing, then comprehending the whole process of change. Once I comprehend what I'm doing, I'll be realizing what's going around the surrounding of problems that I need to tackle and challenge and find solutions, of challenges that I need to meet, and the opportunity and solutions I need to bring to my community. I have to realize the strength of the community, the weakness of the community, and the resources of our society have to realize the fabric of my society, the social fabric of my society, the social fabric of other societies that I'm trying to help, as well as the bonds between different fabrics in my society. This is realization. So we went from believing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Once I'm there, I realize in these nine steps, I'll be able to stand up and defend my community. Be able to stand up and protect my community. Be able to stand up and advocate for my community. These 10 steps will be there before I start to analyze, I start to make a product. It's a long, gradual process of change, of learning of getting experience, of understanding, of realizing, of being able to comprehend what I have been taught and the, the different kind of experience that I have. So after defending and protecting, to analyze, to analyze, to keep looking forward and backward, what we have been doing wrong, our success and our failure. Then from there, I start to be producing my ideas, my theories, my values, my projects, my solution to the community. This process of 11 or 12 steps has to enable me to become productive on the basis of knowledge and experience. Of knowledge and experience and deep learning from others who were and are my teacher and who have different experiences. Because once I have a product, I have to stand up and give it to my community to present it. From analyzing to presenting, from produce production to presentation, to tell my community this is the product. Look at my product. Look at the outcome of my process of knowledge and learning. Learning the knowledge. What kind of product you need to put on the table to help your community? This is the outcome of these 12 or 13 or 14 steps. From there, 
you start to sit down and think positively and collectively and see what's around you. This will enable you as an experienced young man and woman after going to through this process, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve steps. Step number thirteen will be based on the knowledge, the experience that you have to think objectively and positively how to make the social reform and the social change and to fight corruption and to fight the ills inside the society. Producing new theories, producing new ideas, producing new values, producing new leadership, producing new projects. Thinking. Give yourself the time to think after going through this process. Once, once you think, you will be able to draw the direction for your society, for your community, to save the resources, to save the society, and to build the community, and to build the future. To draw the map, to draw the road, and direct them, by drawing direction. You draw them to this direction. Because you have the knowledge, you have the experience, and you have the vision, and you have the product, and you have the solution. From there, you become somebody who would like to, re to renew, okay, innovative, through innovative solution. Innovation that you have will be based on this process of learning through education and through experience. Innovation, renewing. Then soon you reach this level, you look back at the last 40 or 50 years of your life as a worker in the community and start to become a historian. Try the history of your experience, try the history of your society, try the history of your community, try the history of humanity in your subject. You become a historian. And from becoming a historian, you become manufacturer. What do you mean by manufacturer? You become the one who will be able to manufacture the future inside your society and in the neighborhood, in different societies. Based on these 30 or 40 years of gradual process of maturity and gradual process of knowledge seeking. Young men and young women don't think that you will sort out the problem of corruption in the whole world by sitting down like this, by becoming hot headed, by becoming emotional. No way. I'm talking about the process of maybe 15, 30, 40 years to enable you to become a manufacturer, to become somebody who can direct save and draw the roadmap that can save society. Once you see, if you reach the top here and become a manufacturer, you go back to the structure of your society again because the process of change at any society is faster than the process of change of day and night. Because if you have got one million people in your society every day, those one million, every one million people have different needs, different dreams, different problems, and different solutions. They keep growing and growing, and so you will be able to go back as a learner. After becoming a manufacturer, you have to understand that you will keep learning. Above the knowledgeable is the most knowledgeable, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Learner and trainer because the society is changing not, not actually to uh, 24 times a day but every second, every minute, every hour in the day. This is the educational curriculum for you to become a change maker and reform your society and my society. What is the social program that we need to address? I need to follow. First of all, we as young men and women, what do we need to do? To realize 
and discover the needs of the society. It's number one. To be needs driven, not energy driven, not money driven, not fund driven. Once I understand the needs of my society, I have to produce an idea. This idea is to respond to the needs of my society. From there, I have to. So, my idea is to save my society. My dream is to bring justice to every cornerstone of my society. Okay? Number four, I have to find people to support me and to believe in my dream and stand next to me when I am trying to put the seed of my dream on the fertile soil of my society. I need to have companions like all the prophets of God, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Jesus, Moses, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they have companions, they have disciples, they have those kind of followers. Companionship. Then collectively, the four of us, the five of us, or the six of us, or the seven of us, will put the seed of our idea and the seed of our dream to become this community growing tree to save society and save community. Work together for what? For a road map. A road map. To follow. In our society to follow later on. We must as young men and women to draw the road map. Not only for our generation, but for the generation to come afterwards. Not only for the generation to come afterwards, but for humanity as a whole. And once we are on the road, we need to look at the supply. We need some resources, whether local resources or other resources. Then, when we have such resources, we should realize that we must use as, uh, uh, we must, uh, as, li as, as little as we can of these resources and give ourselves as much as we can. To be seen that we are role models. We are not there for the resources, but we are there to save the resources for the community. The supply road. Then, the life of our roadmap to achieve our goals, then our life, our life would be between, as the Prophet said, between the 60s and 70s. And you should limit for your achievement. If we are going to live to this end, I know that some of us will live to the age of 90 or 80, but productivity at its climax will be maximum at this level. The life of the project, the life to cross the road or to walk the road through the road map and the life expectancy of me as an individual leading or become a part of the process of change. While I'm doing all this, while we are doing all this, the more we walk, the more we interact with our community, the more we interact with the global society, the more we will find more gaps, more gaps, more gaps. And this will enable us to respond or to awaken or to direct, to respond by our resources, or to awaken the local community around these gaps, as Hazrat al-Qarnayn did with the people who did not know how to talk, the, 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 the illiterate, or to share the resources with such community. The resources could be knowledge, could be experience, could be guidance. It's not only material resources. Fill the gaps. Filling such gaps would bring solutions. We should live, young men and women, that our solution should be community-based. Our solution should be society-based. Our solution should be locally created. Think globally, but not locally. 
but actually act locally. Act locally and think globally. Then, here we are going from need, idea, dream, companionship, work, roadmap, supply, life, gap, solution, to do what? Social empowerment. Our aim is to empower every citizen in our country. Every citizen in our country, no matter who is she or who is he. It is your country. Whether you are from my faith or from a different faith. Whether you are from my school of thought or from a different school of thought. Whether you are from my race or from a different race. Whether you are from a young man or a young woman or old man or old woman. Whether you are a male or female. Nothing. If I am a citizen, if I am a citizen, I have to be empowered. I have to be empowered through the process of change of the society, this will lead to what? To ownership. If you want a citizen to defend the country, you have to let them to feel that they own the country as individuals. Not to find that the country or the nation or the resources is owned by a group or by a family or by a clan or by a sect. They will never become loyal. And they'll be the people who create the problem for you all the time. Empowerment, then individual ownership. Once we reach both level here of social change and the social program, we have to sit down or through our process to keep passing knowledge. Tawrif, passing knowledge. To people in our society, in our community, in our country. If we fail to pass knowledge, we will fail to build society, we will fail to protect our country. Citizen in the site. To every citizen in the site. Passing knowledge, at that time, we we'll make the change. We we'll enable ourselves to make the change. And we will enable ourselves to keep the knowledge with the people who are going to carry on leading the process of change and the generation who will come later on to excel the process of change and to enhance the process of change and to develop the process of change and to get the unique solution not only for our society but for humanity. Okay? What's our aim? is to save our community, to save our society, to save our country, to save humanity. For the sake of whom? For the sake of Allah Almighty, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. This is our aim. Then at that time, we know that we are leaving this world. But before leaving the world, we should do the three or four of them. Social empowerment, individual ownership, passing the knowledge, completing or starting the process of change and showing the followers or showing our companions or showing the generation to come that the aim is not personal, the aim is not for political reason, the aim is not for financial reason, the aim for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that time when we leave this world, we'll follow the footsteps of the prophets who came to save humanity and take nothing from humanity with them to meet Allah. Then we keep thinking all the time from the process of need to the process of living the, this world about what's next. Keep telling the young men and young women there is no limit for knowledge learning. There is no limit for experience gaining. There is no need of knowledge. There is no limit for knowledge. Every knowledgeable man is the most knowledgeable who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah has sent Hazrat al-Khadr to Musa alayhi salam to teach him as a prophet. And we are neither prophets nor messengers of God. So here, coming back to the title of my talk, of my, my discussion with you today, gradualism is the cornerstone of 
change making. Maturity is there at you even if you are at a young age. And knowledge should be seeked, should be seeking knowledge from the age of being able to speak to the age that we meet Allah with. And change making process, saving community, saving humanity, fighting corruption, building the future is a very difficult process of change and the most difficult process of change. That's why this was prophetical process given to the prophets and messengers of Allah to come and teach, educate, and save, and stand firm to defend the community that Allah granted them the message to defend them. From Adam alayhi salam to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. Thank you very much for listening today. And I hope that next week we'll meet from UK. Today I'm in Istanbul because I've been working around with uh, the Next week we'll talk from UK inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.